Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. In this video, I'm going to be uh, covering the process of exploiting a Drupal vulnerability called uh, Drupal Geddon uh, 2, or utilizing the Drupal Geddon 2 exploit that affects uh, specific versions of Drupal. Uh, the reason I wanted to cover this is primarily because it's uh, quite important, and uh, you know, you, you know, uh, you you will run across quite a few Drupal. Uh, servers that are still out there somewhere in the world that are still running vulnerable versions uh, of Drupal. Again, it's something that I was uh, interested in covering because I haven't covered it uh, at all. And uh, again, if you're not familiar with Drupal, Drupal is a content management system, sort of like what WordPress is. And uh, again, it's uh, it was quite popular uh, before WordPress and even uh, after WordPress. But I think uh, by this point, we know that WordPress is pretty much the uh, the de facto standard when it comes down to a content management system that you know is free and customizable and of course extensible. Uh, so to demonstrate this, I'm going to be utilizing a box on Hack the Box called Bastard. Uh, I believe I may have gone through this once a long time ago because uh, this is quite an old uh, system. It's a retired system, but uh, again, you can easily set up a vulnerable Drupal server by taking a look at the uh, at exploit DB and you know sort of identifying a vulnerable version there. Um, so the Drupal Geddon uh, exploit, there are really uh, two versions of it. There's uh, two primary versions. There's Drupal Geddon 2 and Drupal Geddon 3. And these exploits target different versions of Drupal, right? More, uh, more specifically, 7.5.x. Uh, 7. Uh, 7 and uh, in the case of Drupal Geddon 3, 8.x uh, uh, or whatever, which I'll actually cover. So I've already performed an Nmap scan on the target system. So uh, you can see here, uh, the IP address is going to be different, but we have a web server running, uh, Microsoft IIS. So we know it's uh, the Drupal uh, server or the Drupal site is running on a Windows system. Uh, and in this case, it's most likely a Windows server system, but I didn't perform any operating system guessing. So we're going to try and exploit the vulnerability, or we're going to try and use the Drupal Geddon exploits through some manual exploits uh, out there. Uh, you know, And we're going to try and avoid uh, you know, using any... Uh, any automated exploitation frameworks like Metasploit. So I'll just open up the web server here and uh, let's see uh, whether this uh, loads up. This should bring up, uh, you know, the Drupal site. So there we are. Uh, we can see that it's a standard uh, Drupal installation. There's no content that has been posted. And of course, we're, we're provided with the ability to log in. Now, what's the first thing that you need to do whenever you run across a Drupal site? Well, you need to identify the version, the specific version. Now, in this case, it looks like uh, the site has been cleaned up with regards to information that is disclosed regarding the specific version of Drupal that is running. Uh, but we can try and figure it out. The quickest way, firstly, is to identify. Uh, you can identify the version in some cases through the HTTP headers. So I'll just uh, uh, you know turn on my uh, my Burp Suite uh, profile with Foxy Proxy, and we'll open that up. And uh, I'll open up Burp Suite here, and we'll try and uh, you know reload the page. And let's see whether we can identify the version. If not, there's a couple of other techniques that you can use uh, that I'll explore short, uh, shortly. So let's just give this a couple of seconds. There we are. I'll start burp here and uh, we'll close that up there. And uh, we'll give this a couple of seconds. There we are, proxy. And I'll just reload that there. So uh, in this case, it doesn't look like that is being displayed. Although, as I said, in uh, if we send this to the repeater um, and let's take a look at, let's just send that there. If we take a look at the response. Uh, yeah, there we are. So we get uh, the response actually uh, tells us that there. So you can see it's running Drupal 7, but we don't know the exact version. And of course, it's powered by uh, ASP.NET, which we know it's running on uh, Microsoft IIS, right? So... Uh, we pretty much identified that and of course you know ph the actual version of php is highlighted there now if we wanted to find the exact version which is what is required then what we would need to do uh, let me just close up uh, burp suite here i'll turn off the profile is we can perform a directory brute force there's specific files that, that we're going to be looking for one of them is the changelog file the changelog file essentially contains you know exactly that a changelog of updates and uh, the new features or fixes within updates and if this server or this site has been running for a while then we should have a changelog file so uh, typically what i like doing is performing a directory uh, and file uh, brute force with a tool like gobuster you can use derb or dubuster if you want so directory uh, url 
uh, let me just make sure I specify the scheme there or rather the protocol so HTTP and then the word list that I like using is the is part of the sec list uh, collection of word lists so I've already covered uh, you know what uh, sec lists is but uh, there is a package on Kali that allows you to automatically uh, install or download those word lists so under sec lists uh, it's under discovery, web content, and under content management system. So I typically, whenever I'm dealing with a content management system, I like using the word list designed for that specific. So that specific uh, content management system. So Drupal, uh, Drupal.txt. So I'll hit enter. And uh, we'll give this a couple of seconds. And let's see if the changelog file exists on the server. Uh, and that should pretty much tell us the exact version. So it looks like we have the blueprints directory here. Uh, it looks like this server is quite old because it contains the blueprints for Drupal 6, 7, 8, which is quite weird. If you have installed Drupal before, then you should know this. So you can see we have the changelog file here. Um, and uh, we can actually just terminate that and let's take a look at it now. So uh, changelog.txt. Uh, there we are. So we can see it's running version 7.54, which is great. That means that we can pretty much exploit it. Now, there is a Metasploit module available that will allow you to exploit it. But again, it needs a lot of tweaking. And in most cases, it's not going to work out of the box, which is why we're going to you know, try and avoid using the Metasploit framework as much as possible. You can see this is uh, the different versions here that have been installed. Uh, so mostly version 7. If we take a look at the earliest version, this just looks like the entire change log, which is quite weird. Uh, and yeah, so we know it's running 7.54. So if we perform a quick uh, search for Drupal Geddon 2, there is an exploit that I like using on GitHub. Uh, you can see it right over here. It's uh, by Dreadlocked, so all credit to him. It's a Ruby exploit. Uh, that uh, again it can be used to exploit the uh, can can be used to exploit uh, Drupal versions 8.5 uh, and you know lower than 8.5.1, which is essentially Drupal Geddon 3, and then of course uh, we have Drupal Geddon 2, which is a remote code execution vulnerability within Drupal, and uh, in our case you can see we're targeting a version that falls within the following range, so anything less than 7.5.8 and anything greater than 7.x, right? So uh, you can see that uh, for this version here, uh, the user password URL attacking the trigger element name form and the post render parameter using PHP's pass through function. So if you're not familiar with the vulnerability, the vulnerability is essentially caused by the uh, form API. Uh, the form API is essentially used uh, or set up by Drupal to help developers uh, create forms and handle user submissions. Uh, and uh, the, the issue within it is uh, part uh, is uh, the, the real cause of the vulnerability is the fact that it doesn't sanitize uh, input. And uh, in certain cases, you can pass in uh, parameters like the, uh, the pass through, uh, you know, the pass through command or function in this case and get it to execute a particular command or a particular file. In this case, this exploit provides us with a PHP web shell. So it'll upload it and then It'll, uh, you know, it'll then execute it and we should get a pseudo terminal or a PHP shell, if you will. So if we take a look at version 7, which is what we're using, you can see it's fairly simple to use. We simply run the Ruby file here. Uh, we specify the target URL, so fairly simple. So I'll just copy that there. I've already cloned this uh, GitHub repo. Uh, so I'll just navigate to that directory. So this is under my desktop and Drupal Geddon 2. So we have uh, the Drupal Geddon 2 uh, Ruby uh, script or file, and we just pass in the actual URL. Uh, if you are trying to exploit version 8 of Drupal, so Drupal Geddon 3, then you'd need to pass in, uh, it's essentially, in this case, it looks like it is authenticated. You do require some credentials or uh, some form of credentials. It looks like it's still the same thing because I do know in certain cases, uh, you do need to specify, uh, you know, username and password uh, yeah there we are so you can actually specify the authentication but in order for this to work uh, in some information is required like the PHP session uh, and I believe uh, that's part of the cookie so we can actually take a look at the exploit here there's a few things you can customize you can disable the PHP web shell so there we are try PHP shell you can set that to false and you can also customize the name of the web shell so you can change it to something that's a bit more clandestine. Uh, but it's uh, fairly simple with regards to how it works. So 
you know, I can just hit enter. Uh, this is going to try and find a directory if it does work. So you can see it finds the specific version of Drupal and it checks whether it's vulnerable. It's also going to check whether clean URLs are enabled. Clean URLs essentially mean that uh, parameters and values are passed in correctly. Um, and then of course, uh, in this case, you can see it tells us that the code execution is possible. And it's going to see whether there is an existing shell if you've run the exploit before. And it's then going to try and write the web shell to a particular directory. So it's going to you know try and see whether you have write access to uh, specific directories where it can be written. And there we are. It looks like under the site's default files directory, we do have, uh, you know, a write permission. So it's able to, um, in this case, it tells us target is not exploitable, might not have write access. And then it says failed. And in this case, it says dropping back to direct OS commands. So yeah, it just provides us with the ability to execute commands directly if it doesn't find a writable directory for the actual web shell. So uh, you know, I can say, who am I? Because we know we're running, the target is running Windows here. And in this case, I believe we need to elevate our privileges. So there we are, NT Authority uh, I user, which is the Microsoft IAS um, service account for, uh, you know, the, the, the actual web server. So it's the equivalent of uh, WWW data on Linux. Um, so, you know, I can say, uh, you know, system info to get, you know, what version of Windows is running. And we can then try and identify exploits that we can use. So you can see in this case, it's running Windows Server 2008 R2. Uh, and does it have any patches? It's a 64-bit, obviously. It doesn't have any hotfixes installed. So it looks like it is a clean install of Windows Server 2008. Um, so we can pretty much uh, try and um, and identify a potential, uh, you know, privilege escalation uh exploits and most likely kernel exploits for this version of windows server given the fact that it's running windows server 2008 we could run the eternal blue exploit now in this case because we don't have a stable shell we will need to get a uh, a meterpreter session now the way to do that is firstly uh, we need to navigate to the root of the c drive so let me just do that here so this is going to take a while because they executed on the fly and then I'll just open up a second terminal here uh, so MSF Venom um, and then the payload windows uh, x64 meterpreter reverse uh, TCP and I believe I need my IP here so VPN IP that's just an alias so I can get my hack the box IP for this box or for my system and then L host is equal to the following and uh, L port, we can set that to one, two, three, four format exe and we can just call this reverse.exe. Um, right, so we'll hit enter. We then need to set up a web server and I've done this within the Drupal get in two directory. So let me just navigate to, uh, to my hack the box directory. So hack the box, uh, boxes and bastard. Uh, let me switch over there. There we are. And I'll just run the previous command again. Just close that up. Uh, so that will generate the actual payload. We then need to download it onto the target, execute it, and we should receive a meterpreter session. We can then take a look at how to elevate our privileges. So I'll give this a couple of seconds. Uh, it shouldn't take too much time. There we are. And we can then say sudo python, python3 mhttp.server and uh, port 80. Just provide my password here and we can then utilize the cert util directory so i'm not sure whether we can write to this directory but let's try it out so url cache uh url cache and uh file http because it's not interactive it might not allow us to navigate to the root of the c drive but hey let, let's just try it out so we're downloading reverse.exe and we'll save it dot reverse as reverse.exe so I'll hit enter. And let's see whether that was downloaded successfully. There we are. So we, we can see the get requests there. And we'll now set up the handler with uh, Metasploit. So MSF console. And uh, what I'll do here is uh, let me just uh, wait for this to start up. Because we'll still need to execute the actual payload that we generated. So uh, Metasploit as usual taking its uh, sweet time so we'll say use multi 
handler set the payload to windows x64 not z64 x64 meterpreter reverse tcp set l host to the following and the l port i believe we set to one two three four so one two three four and we can run and uh, we can now execute the the actual payload so reverse.exe hit enter we should see that it's sending the stage there we are sending stage and we should get a meterpreter session here shortly after which we can start uh, there we are so we actually get it much quicker than i expected so sys info windows server 2008 get use id uh, get privs let's try and see what privileges we have uh, we have the impersonate privilege. Uh, let's load incognito and let's see whether we, we have any uh, imperson any delegation or impersonation tokens. So uh, list tokens, uh, probably not. So, okay, so that vector failed. If we try get system, we can see that fails as well. So it looks like it's most likely a kernel exploit because hack the box is usually like that. Um, right, okay, so that's executed. Uh, can we migrate to a, a better process here uh, doesn't look like because we don't have the privileges required to do so so what i'll do now is let me just uh that looks like it timed out so that's fine let me just close that up and let me zoom in here so it doesn't interfere with anything that i'm going to be doing so we can utilize the uh, exploit suggester module with metasploit to try and find privilege escalation vulnerabilities or in this case we can just search for the windows uh, kernel exploits github repository so windows kernel exploits and yeah this is the sec wiki so this is a collection of kernel exploits for windows uh, and in some cases they they provide you with uh, pre-compiled binaries or executables that you can run so these are all the various um, exploits there so let's take a look at one that fits within our requirements so we're looking for windows server 2008 so that's uh, quite important um and in this case, it has to be R2, but uh, let's see which one works in this case. So that's a kernel driver. I'm not sure that might work. Domain privilege escalation. I'm not sure it's part of a domain. Let's take a look at this one here. So that's uh, MS14058. So this targets win32k.sys. It works on 2003, 8, 12, 7, and 8. So let's see how this works. Um, so it looks like in this case, the usage is fairly simple. We execute the executable and then we can run a particular command. So in this case, you know, something like who am I? And that should elevate or we can generate another payload and then execute it with this exploit and obtain an elevated session. Um, you know, that should be fine. Or, you know, another example is to add another user, uh, a backdoor user, but that already assumes you have access. And then of course there's a pre-built uh, module here. So I believe this is already pre-compiled, MS14058. So we can actually download that there. Uh, but if we take a look at the exploit files here, uh, I believe this is the source code. So there we are, you can actually compile it for yourself. Uh, let me just take a step back or let me just go back where I was. There we are. So let me just uh, download the exploit here. So I'll say download and uh, we'll save that there in my downloads directory and i'll now generate another payload so uh in this case we will set the port to maybe 4444 because i didn't utilize that previously and we can set this to let's call this uh, i'm not sure we can just call it uh, esc.exe right and uh, what working directory are we currently in? So we're in the Drupal directory. I believe that's where the exe was uploaded. Uh, no, it actually looks like it was uploaded in the root of the C drive. That's interesting. So let's navigate to the root of the C drive. And uh, let's see whether we can see that. So uh, we're looking for rev.exe. It doesn't look like that was saved here. That's very weird. So I'm just going to create a temp directory or the temp directory. Uh, so I'll navigate to the temp directory here and we can now upload from the downloads directory the actual uh, the actual uh, kernel exploit there and uh, we can then upload the actual uh, what's it called the uh, escalate payload so we will say um, 
upload and esc.exe. There we are. And we'll also need to set up another handler here. So MSF console. I'm just going to set it up really quickly because I don't want to waste any more time. All right, so I've set up the handler there. So uh, if we take a look at the usage instructions here, again, I'm not diving deep into this particular kernel exploit, but there are quite a few references that we can use here. Um, anyway, so it's fairly simple. We simply run the actual executable and then specify a command, right? So we'll just open up a shell here and uh, dir so let's see whether that works out here so it's ms 14058exe uh, so who am i let's see if that works on this system might cause some issues not really sure that's always the problem when you're running kernel exploits is that they're not stable uh, in that case you pretty much are better off using the actual uh, metasploit module for this kernel exploit uh, it looks like it's hung, so not really sure uh, whether this is going to work. I'm just going to give it a couple of uh, seconds here just to see what type of output it throws. All right, so as expected, it actually hangs. So it looks like we've lost that session pretty much. So uh, this info, uh, let's see if that's still running. No, it doesn't. So exit, what we'll need to do is just run that one more time and then... Uh, just open up another terminal here. So doc, uh, desktop and uh, Drupal Geddon. There we are. And uh, we can run the Drupal Geddon Ruby script here and just pass in the URL just so that we can execute that file again. So let me just do that and obtain another session really quickly. Hopefully this works. So looks like there's an issue with the system oh boy don't tell me that kernel exploit re rebooted the system it might have might have because not sure the site is reachable the uh, system is probably restarting because i uh, of course had to use a kernel exploit but that's the vector that i'm provided with here so i guess uh that actually should work so i'm just going to give it a couple of seconds to see if it reboots if not uh you know we can uh, pretty much just give it a couple of uh, seconds more. All right, so I've reobtained the session. I'm just gonna try and execute it as is, uh, and then try and execute the um, the payload that we generated, the esc.exe payload. So we'll say ms14. This might fail, so we might have to, or, you know, we might have to utilize or test this out with the Metasploit module. Uh, alternatively, I'd, uh, you know, I should have just run the Windows exploit suggested to get an accurate list of uh, vulnerabilities that affect this specific version. I'm just going off experience here. So let's try and execute that. Uh, doesn't look like we'll get the, uh, it's not, it doesn't look like it's actually going to send a stage. So uh, we pretty much are better off using the, the actual uh, payload for this particular exploit, uh, this kernel exploit, if you will. I believe one exists yeah so there we are it actually exists uh you know as for the actual instructions here i think the the issue might be the fact that we're executing um we're executing the 32-bit version i'm not entirely sure we pretty much might need to compile it ourselves i'm not sure this exploit usually does work uh we take a look at release here exploit.exe there's no you know two versions there but uh i believe that we do need to use a 64-bit executable so i'm just going to terminate it obtain another session and let's try the metasploit module if not then we'll pretty much uh need to find another kernel exploit to use all right so i've ob obtained another session and uh, we can try and use this one here um so i'm just going to copy that there this module here I believe we need to configure a couple of options. Uh, so it's sending the stage here. Hopefully we'll get the interpreter session shortly um, without any issues. I'll still leave this handler running just in case we need it uh, because I've already generated the payload as is or as it is, if you will. Um, so yeah, we can just put this in the background. So that's session three, paste in that command there and we'll set the payload to... Uh, sorry, uh, not payloaf, but payload. So uh, if I can type it in correctly, so Windows x64, interpreter 
reverse TCP. Uh, probably need to set my IP address here. So we're looking for the tunnel zero interface. Uh, there it is. So we'll say set L host to the following. Set L port to maybe, I think it's already set to 4444. Uh, so show options. There we are, and we need to change the target. So we'll set the session to three, set the target to Windows X64. Okay, let's let's run that. So exploit, fail to bind, that's weird. Uh, we set it to port, that's very weird. Uh, so let me just check my jobs. Sessions, oh yeah, we have one running there, my bad. So set uh, L port to 4433, exploit. That should work. Let's see if this kernel exploit does in the air. It looks like it's working. So there we go. So we should receive privileged access now. So I can terminate these two here and we can get rid of that there. So exploit finished. Wait for hopefully privileged payload execution to complete. We should have admin privileges or anti authority system privileges on the target system. But this really wasn't uh, the focus of this video. You know, I've covered Windows uh, privilege escalation in depth. Uh, I was more focused on exploiting Drupal, but uh, you know, you pretty much, when you exploit a web app, you are in most cases going to get an unprivileged session. So privilege escalation is part of it, regardless of the target operating system, whether it's Windows or Linux. So, you know, get use ID and the authority system. So, you know, we can pretty much uh, go ahead and get the flags, etc. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm going to be making more videos focused on pen testing and red teaming in addition to the uh, to the web app pen testing series, which is still ongoing. So there's a couple of other videos that I'm going to be making on that. Uh, so do stay tuned for that. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section. If you want to reach out to me, you can do so via Twitter or the Hackersploit Discord server. The links to both of those are in the description section. You can also check out the Hackersploit forum that is accessible on forum.hackersploit.org. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so via Patreon. The link to that is in the description section as well. So that's going to be it for this video. And I will be seeing you in the next video. I just want to take a couple of moments to thank our Patreons. Thank you, Michael Hubbard, Dustin Umpress, Jerry Speds, Doozy, Sid Saab, Ryan Carr, Shamir Douglas, Jojo Bibi, Balangos, Kushkev, RS, Nino Buikov, and David Bricker. You guys are really awesome. Thank you very much for supporting us. And you guys make these types of videos possible. So we really appreciate it. And we look forward to producing even more high quality content.